We've seen throughout this title how Word is more easily interlinked with the cloud and the web by being able to store your files in the SkyDrive by inserting images that are stored on the internet. But we can go one step further by actually using Word as your editor for blogs. And it's all set up internally to do this. You simply need to have a blogging site that is supported. Now we can actually take existing Word documents and change them into blog articles. Or what you'll find if you go to File and New is there is a blank blog post already in place. So it's like a little template that is set up to be ready to provide information to a blog. So if I choose that and then I can create a document using it, you'll find that I'm actually looking at a blog post. I have a blog post toolbar instead of the normal Word home ribbons, etc. So if I want to create a new blog, I put my title in here where it says enter post title here. How sensible. Guys, blog for the world. And then I put my content into this lower half. This is simply a blog to prove that I can do it. And then we need to take that blog post we've just created and send it up to our blogging website. Now we have a blog website, which is actually hosted by WordPress. And we can have a look. It's guyvacaro.wordpress.com. Very simple layout with a few posts that have been made over the time that it's been in life. What we need to do now is take our little blog and post it on that particular blog site. So we go to publish and then publish. And it tells me that I'm going to send unencrypted information across the internet. That's fine. I want to continue contacting blog provider. And it says this post was published to Gavikaro today's day and time. If I then go around to the blog site and refresh, I'll find that that's the latest blog. Guys blog for the world. This is simply a blog to prove that I can do it. Now, obviously that was made to look very simple. Before you can actually publish a blog, you would need to set up your account. And that's done through here where it says manage accounts. And we can see in here, I have an account that I can change. And this is the information you will need from your blog provider. The blog post URL is your blog address. So that's guyvacaro.wordpress.com. This end part must be the same and will remain and will actually be pre-filled for you when you come to add in a new account. It has to be slash xmlrpc.php because effectively that's the file that converts your Word document into a blog post. You would then need to enter in your username and password for the blog. You can ask Word to remember that so that in future you can just publish new documents. So if I say OK, it will always give me this warning about sending passwords unencrypted. But that's fine for our purposes. Contacting blog provider. And this is just really to verify my username and password. Account successful. Thank you. If I want to add a new account, I simply click new. The blog provider I use must be one of these. WordPress is pretty common and free. And then next, and you'll see it's the same dialog box we just saw, but blank. And you simply enter your blog address in here, username, password, ask it to remember the password if you wish. If you share the machine with someone else, then that's probably not a good idea. But if it's your own machine, then that's fine. OK, and then you will have a blog account completed. Now you will be prompted for this information if you attempt to publish a blog post when you don't have a blog account. Cancel and close. And that's my first blog. Now, if I want to take an existing document, such as our access manual extract, it's in your working folder. So I can take this existing document, go to file, share, post to blog, then post a blog on the right. So I sort of double click in the same thing, really. And what you will find is it then converts your current document into a blog post. And we can see it now looks pretty similar to previous one that we created from scratch. I would take the title out of my Word content effectively and post it in here. That way my title will appear as the blog post title. Do a little bit of tidying up of the extra returns you get from Word. And then we're ready to publish. So publish, publish, yes. Contacting my provider using the information that obviously we've already stored and saved in the account section. So you don't have to keep re-entering that information. The post then gets published and I can go around and have a look at my blog site. So if I refresh, my latest blog appears. What is the database? Now I can even use Word to open existing blogs and update them. If I go to open existing, it will then list 
all of the blogs that are currently in my blog, there's even one that doesn't have a title. So I could choose the Hello World one, which is probably the very first one I put in. Now this box that keeps asking me about the password being sent back and forth, I can put a little tick in, don't show this message again. And that's probably recommended on your own machines because it could get annoying, as it does. So here we are, hello world, welcome to WordPress. This is your very first blog. So that's not even my blog, that's the default one given to me by WordPress. So I can make a change to that. This is now Guy running the show. Publish. And you see that the post then changes to this post is republished rather than published. Background at the blog, I would need to go all the way back to the beginning and refresh to find the hello world one there is posted in August 2012. This is now Guy running the show. So it shows my update that I've just done from Word. So that's using Word not only to publish new blog posts on your blog, but take current Word documents and publish them on your blog and even edit current blog posts within your blog. That's a great offline tool for updating online content.